everyone, and welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails, the weekly podcast that helps you grow your business, improve your life, and enjoy yourself along the way. I'm your host, Alan Langer, and every week we try to bring you the best thought leaders, the best business leaders, and the best minds out there to help you succeed in business and in life. So sit back, relax, grab your pad, your pen, and your favorite beverage, and enjoy the next episode of Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. Great to have everyone back. This is Al Langer, your host, and I've got another host who I'm hosting tonight by the name of Dave England, and we're going to get to Dave in a minute. Dave is lucky number 28. He will be podcast number 28 for me, which is awesome. This has been a blast, and I just keep enjoying it more and more. So we'll get to Dave in one second, but uh, as I start every show, a reminder, The website address is marketingandsalespodcast.com, marketingandsalespodcast.com. And every week we have the Ask Alan and his guest segment. And uh, we have a a pretty cool question coming up from a gentleman from Boston later on in the show. And here's the, the fun part. If we read or if I read your question on the air, you get a free signed autographed copy of my book. So send those questions in. If we pick it, you get a free book signed by me. Okay. We have... A very cool guest tonight, a good, good friend of mine. I've known Dave England now for about a year and a half, I think, Dave. It's been, it's been a little while. Yeah. But um, Dave, I'm going to let him kind of tell you about himself, but what, what Dave is famous for a lot of things. He's, he's pretty, pretty popular in Rhode Island, <laughs> but he has his famous own show. Famous for a lot of things. I like that. <laughs> he has his own show called Wine with Dave, and it is a live show on Facebook. And there it is. So that's a good segue, Dave. What are you drinking tonight? Since it is marketing and sales over cocktails. Drinking. Oh, what am I drinking? Jim Beam honey. No way. And I've got yes. Jim Beam rye. Look at that. We are, we are. Oh no, I got Jack Daniels. Okay. So Jack Daniels, Jim Beam. JD meets JB. That's good. JB. So yeah. Cheers. It's, Vir- it's, virtual it's, cheers to you, Dave. There we go. Oh. Can we gotta, we gotta do that? Clink. There we go. Crash right. the clink. Yeah. How do we do that? Uh, yeah, th- Alan, thank you for having me on. This is great. And no, this is fun. It's one of the highlights of 2020 meeting you. Although actually I met you in 2019, right? Yeah, I did. I did your marketing camp last summer. Was it last summer? We yes, met? Yep. that's we right. That that's, last summer. Yep. Yep. that's where we met. And I met Sal. I think Sal, I met him at, at the Nook coffee shop one day and we yeah, just yeah. started talking and one thing led to another. And I sponsored the uh, the marketing camp, and we've become friends ever since. So, so tell everyone about you know you've been doing marketing a long time. You have your own agency. You're very successful, and now you have this really cool show. and And I encourage everyone check it out. Wine with Dave. Uh, you can find it on Facebook. Um, uh, it's going to be in the show notes. He'll tell you how to get there at the end of the show. But uh, yeah. give it give people a little background on how you got to where you are right now. Oh, I don't know how far back you want to go, but <laughs> well, we only I've have about been, 45 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, I've always been an artist, graphic designer, illustrator, very creative, very heavy on the right brain. I lean right. Not good with balancing my check, but if you need some <laughs> ideas for businesses, now I'm your guy. I'm your guy. Um, I've gotten better with my checkbook. So kidding aside, I started You know, I was working for a lot of companies and I felt like there was a ceiling working in-house with other design firms and probably like businesses like Benny's. I worked for Benny's in their main department. I used to design all their flyers and their their, um, circulars that would go out every week. The beloved Benny's of Rhode Island. Yeah, for the Uh, non-Rhode Islanders, Benny's was this beloved sort of like a department store kind of auto store kind of everything if yeah, you couldn't like find a, it if you couldn't just go to Benny's they would have it it's like a Walmart junior in yeah. Rhode Island you know <laughs> it's a Walmart junior that's so, a great way to put it <laughs> yeah and uh and when they came to town that was kind of scary we're all like oh my gosh but um that was great and back then you know we would advertise everything from Easter bunnies to candy to bike tires to bicycles to oil filters to whatever. And we had to draw them, literally take out an ink pen 
and draw the pictures, wow. put it in a Xerox machine and shrink it down and then go to the typesetting machine and type out the name was the heading copy and price. It was always heading copy price. Wow. You know, uh, shell oil, 99 cents a quart, blah, 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 a little description. Right. And it was all, it would be all in these boxes. Imagine little thumbnails mm -hmm. and we would have the circular, you'd open up the circular and there's all everything, every item. We do that every single week. Wow. So that's where my art illustration skills came into play. Then we went digital and the Mac world opened up for us and we we're on Macs and we were designing and scanning and it was crazy. But uh, then I left that and then I went to work for Brine, B-R-I-N-E, up in Massachusetts and they are one of the bigger lacrosse field hockey soccer uh, company manufacturers. Uh -huh. So I would design logos that went on the sticks. Okay. So if there was going to be a new line of sticks, lacrosse sticks, like the, the infusion, I would, I would actually design the logo with huh. our small team and that would be on the stick. I designed soccer boxes a little bit, but uh, some goal boxes, uh -huh. you know, soccer goal box. So I was in the sporting industry uh -huh. and I was really, really big on branding and logos and product logos. And I've always been working with clients on the side, but at one point I realized I need to just break out on my own. Uh -huh. And it was, I had lost my job in two, th in actually October 31st, I was laid off from my job in 2001 because 9 11 had just happened 30 days ago. Uh -huh. And I put a resume out, had to put out about 150, and it was like, no word of a lie, about 150. And I got a few bites and one of them, I was overqualified and like four or five of them, I was, uh, they just said no, but that's the people that responded. Like right, no one responded. Respond. It was a scary time. Now, were you, were you, uh, married with kids at the time or were you? Were yeah. You, yeah. Oh boy. So it yeah. makes it even more scarier. Yeah. Just adopted two kids in Russia, um, yeah. newly married, just kind of young dad and it was just scary times like what wow. do you do now so um i was working with a designer a friend of mine who had a design agency in his house and i was like this is cool you know and so he hired me he's like yeah i, I definitely could use your work your, your uh, help so i worked with him and one day he calls me up and he says dave i got some news come on over i, I gotta talk to you so I came over and he, I said, what? And he goes, well, we've been working together for a few months now, but I'm moving. I'm moving to North Carolina. Wow. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so now I have no job. I was excited. I got a job and then I had no job again. And it's so uncertain when you're working for other people. And I loved working for him, loved working for everyone I worked for. But I realized you will never fire yourself if you're mm -hmm. your own boss. Mm -hmm. You'll actually kick yourself in the pants mm -hmm. and make something of yourself and get busy. So I said, I got to stop my own business. So I asked my wife, what do you think? She's like, yeah. I said, no time like now. So April of 2002, um, believe that was the month we uh, launched we, me, England Studio, and it was hellish. It was horrible. <laughs> I could definitely deliver the goods, but finding, being a salesman, I knew nothing about sales. And, uh, you know, fast forward, I learned a lot. I avoided web design until all my clients said, we love your work. Please build us a website. Right. And I said, uh, no, I don't do that <laughs> stuff. I'm not into coding. That is not a pencil. Pencil is my tool. <laughs> so uh, long story short, I said, all right. I stayed up late a few nights, whipped open Dreamweaver and started learning how to code. And Dreamweaver. Wow. I remember that. Am I bringing you back? You're bringing me back, man. <laughs> Those are the days. So I learned, you know, learned how to do some basic HTML sites and then Flash. That was big. I was a big Flash developer and got better and better at it. And I'm a sponge. I love learning new programs. So that was easy. But then I realized that writing was on the wall. Flash was going to go away. Mm -hmm. So I found WordPress. And mm -hmm. that was one of the best decisions I ever made really dove in deep and then uh, brought on a partner, Sal Sarko, great guy. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I've known him for years and uh, we became partners and it just kind of just really started taking off. England studio was not a one man. It was never really a one man operation. I always had another guy with me. Mm -hmm. I paid him consultant, you know, some web designer or someone else working with me. And then, uh, so then Sal came on and it was like, really, uh, our phrase was one plus one doesn't equal two yeah. equals six. Yeah. Right. Right. And because, you know, you get two brains is really, you're adding a lot more. So we really went from one to two to six. It was just, you know, we started getting a lot of clients. Sal is great with client retention mm -hmm. and it's just been great. It's been great. So graphic design branding you know i'm the winner of the um marcom award for branding excellence i've won the american design award for um for web design oh wow webmasters award so i've got i'm an award-winning guy i don't like to toot my own horn there but all this stuff just kind of happened i just stuck with it and well, not and once did i fire myself and, Which and now you're really on good. marketing and sales over cocktails. So that's going to go right at the top of your award list because you're yes. a guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is up there. <laughs> so that's me, you know. Well, I can attest to your excellence and, and, and everything you bring. Like, you know, you know better than anyone. I have this weekly uh, networking group that my audience knows on Fridays. But, you know, early on, you, 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 gave talks and you give tips every week and you're everything you give is, is like gold is very, very helpful. You know, you did your Google tips and your search and all that stuff. So congratulations on your success. I'm, I'm glad I know you. I'm glad you're in my corner and glad you're a Rhode Islander. So, so tell me if you had to, we get a lot of salespeople, a lot of marketing people listening to this show. And I think especially in 2020, there's so much, I think people get overwhelmed with all the stuff that they have to do. Like they're looking, oh my God, if I got to brand myself, I got to be on every piece of social media. I got to be on LinkedIn. I got to have a website. And it's like, it's almost like analysis, paralysis by analysis. If someone is, is starting their own company and they say, okay, I got to, I got to start my marketing. What's a good, where do they start? What would you say as, you know, the veteran that you are, how would you how would you guide them? Well, I shared that at the marketing camp that as far as social media goes, because mm -hmm. there's a bunch of them, I jokingly say I know six languages, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch. Yep. You know, there's so many and you have you almost treat them like babies. Imagine having giving birth to sex tuplets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and every day you got to feed them. I got to feed Twitch. I got to feed LinkedIn. I got bottles in, in Facebook and I'm just squeezing those milk. I'm like posting post. It can drive you crazy. And then yeah. what's really going to get you the, the results. So just trust the wisdom that you look at on and find online. It yeah. depends on the industry you're in, but if you're B2B, you got to be LinkedIn all the mm -hmm. way. Right. I mean, just trust that you need to be on LinkedIn. There's now they just released that. They've hit the 700 million mark. Mm -hmm. yep, Only 700 the, million. Under last year, the end of last year was 600 and like 20. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. And actually earlier, prior to marketing camp in the summer, it was 500 million. Right. Yeah. So I used and, an analogy that I had to change. Yeah. <laughs> the algorithm changed. And I remember at the marketing camp, so summer of 2019, mm -hmm. you said... There's this new thing coming out. I got to check out. It's called TikTok, I think. I think you said that at the marketing camp. And that yeah, was a year yeah. and a half ago. And now look what's happened to TikTok. Yeah, you know, I'm actually, for a guy time. in his 50s, I'm, I'm trending on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> trending with 180 followers, which is not a lot. <laughs> Believe me, it's not a lot. No, no. But um, yeah, so I think the advice would be, you, you got to be in front of people. I mean, I, I, I told you this earlier, Alan, it's just success comes from just meeting people. Mm -hmm. So how do you meet people? Well, on social media, you don't really meet them. They meet you. It's the other way around. Mm -hmm. So you got to be on video. You, you, re you have to be doing shows like this, which is great. This show is awesome. You know, you got to, you got to be in front of people. You got to try to get on podcasts, yep. try to get on live feeds. Uh, just try to get used to opening up your camera 
and standing at the beach and just make it face you and look at it and talk into it and just give a tip. Yeah. And even if you think it's horrible, it's like, oh man, I am not like that other guy that's on YouTube. Who cares? Just get it out there. Yeah. Because the thing is the guy on YouTube, if you're an attorney and there's a guy on YouTube and he's just super smooth and funny and witty, there are people that will relate to him, but there are a lot of other people, there's millions and millions and millions of people who would rather call you up because you have you just kind of fumble through with your words. You become you more approachable. Horrible. Right. Yeah, you're like more approachable, real. You're not a sales, you're not like the car salesman guy. Right, Nothing right. against car salesmen, but you know, that kind of a selling, selling, selling. So sometimes flubbing through who you are and just getting the word out is great. That's mm -hmm. very endearing. People right. love that. Well, I mean, here's a great example. Like, you know, everyone's scrolling through social media. They're scrolling on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. And, and, and you want to have something that's going to, that, as they say, stop to scroll. You know, your headline mm -hmm. wants to stop to scroll. And today I had five minutes between, I don't know what I was doing. And I went on my phone on LinkedIn and I saw this woman, I, I literally don't remember her name, but I, I saved it. But she was talking about, so first of all, I stopped and listened to her. But second, she was talking about what we're talking about is putting yourself out there. And she said, here's the, here's the one thing I want everyone to understand. No one is looking for you. You mm -hmm. have to get in front of them. Right. Until you start building your brand, that's the only time they'll start looking for you. But you can't just sit back and say, well, I know all this great stuff. So bring them on. They're all going to start knocking on my door. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's a good point about how we're just scrolling through looking for stuff. We just want to get entertainment. You got to have a really good heading, mm -hmm. which is going to make people stop. Yeah. And your opening clip, if you're doing video, for instance, has to be really interesting, like hold up a prop. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, whether you're a contractor, a lawyer, a mortician, hold up a prop. Like if you held up a pair of glasses, you know. And the video started and you're like this. Yeah. You just start talking and you related vision to your. I mean, I, I could come up with an, 10 analogies right now about vision in yep. marketing. Yep. You know, like I can see better when I use social media. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, this, just hold up a prop because that'll pe make people stop. And you know what's interesting? I just read this the other day. People scroll, they swipe up, they keep swiping to go down and look. Yep. The average person swipes the exact height of the Statue of Liberty every day. Get out of here. That's Is a that great Is that freaking stat. weird? <laughs> That's We're amazing. like this, boom, boom, boom. If you're sliding through, you're going through three feet, 10 feet, 20 yeah. feet, and you put it down and you pick it up a few hours later and you're just, you're watching TV with the wife and you're just, boom, 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 six feet, 10 feet, 20 wow. feet, 30 feet, you stop, 30 feet. Yeah, the Statue of Liberty every day. Like now, I don't know how they gauge that, but so your stuff has to look amazing. Yep. If yep. it's a video or a post, it has to look amazing for mm -hmm. people to go, whoa, what was that? And then scroll back. There it is. What is that? Right. And then the key is engagement after they stop. If somebody mm -hmm. likes your post or someone makes a comment, you can't ignore it. If you wanna, if you wanna start building your brand, then you start connecting and you start engaging with these people. And it just yeah. builds over time. It's a long play, but that's it how is you a do long it. Play. That's how you do it. And and if you don't, you, there's no shortcut in 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 that type of building your brand on 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 social media, unless mm -hmm. you know you you post something really crazy. So as as yeah. we've seen, I actually had this. I'm mm -hmm. not going to name her name, but so I I I I get out there and I get a lot of great people on my podcast like you. And I get them by simply actually asking them to be on the podcast. I always get, how do you get some great people on your podcast? I'm like, I kind of just ask them. <laughs> so, it, you know, you engage a little bit, you have a conversation, then you ask them to be on a podcast. Well, I found this one, there was a 21-year-old woman who I saw on LinkedIn who had 2.5 million followers on TikTok. Mm. I'm like, oh my God. I want her to be on my podcast to talk about how do you do that? How do you get that type of following? Right. You know what she said? And I asked her, she didn't say thank you. She didn't, wasn't cordial. She's like, I'm sorry. I only go on podcasts that have 10,000 downloads a week. 
<laughs> There's a 21 year old. <laughs> I know, huh? It's that's like scary wow. stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's the only one I ever never said never said ever never said yes to me. So the only one didn't say Well, you yes. know what though? So here's the good advice of someone who's listening that's, you know, wants to start in marketing and they don't know <clears throat> what channel to use. Don't let that stuff scare you that there's like some 21 year old kid no. or 18 year old girl who's got like 35 million followers. Like, oh my gosh, I'll never catch up to that. Right. They're only looking at her combing her hair. Right. <laughs> when you really think about it, is she really giving out good pointers? Right. It's really important to have the right followers. Like I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram. I have like over 500, mm -hmm. but under 600. But there, I don't buy followers because you can do that. You can go to a third yeah. party and buy them, as you know. I yeah. would never, never do that. I want to get one at a time, drip in, drip in, new follower a week, mm -hmm. once every two weeks. Very slow, but those 500 people will hire me down the road. So yes, just don't, don't worry about the numbers. Do not get messed up with the numbers. Right, 100%. And, and, and again, when I'm kind of the same way. I'll get one or two a week maybe, and I got one an hour before we, we started this podcast. And I just said, hello, like just new follower, blah, 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 started following you. Hello. Mm -hmm. Thanks for following me. And you start a conversation and you just never know. You never yeah. know if they're going to hire you, if they know someone that's going to recommend you to someone else and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, absolutely. So you've won some website awards and, you, and your go-to is WordPress, right? You like WordPress? Is, is, is that your go-to platform for yeah, WordPress? Yeah, WordPress is it. We do Squarespace. We, we can do we can do almost anything, but WordPress is the go-to. It has a love affair with Google, you know. So okay. whatever you do, it just ties right in with Google, and you tend to be found for what you are if you're very unique and you have a, a niche. So yeah. What are you seeing today where people are coming to you? That's that's and, that's the one I go with. Okay, you just froze for a second, so I uh, so I did hear that, but I started. So what are you seeing today where people, if they're coming to you, are they looking for full websites? Are they looking for design help? Like where are people today? Uh, is, it, is it companies? Are there a lot of individual people coming to you? What do you see from a website standpoint? They're looking for full websites. They know yeah. they need something better okay. with what they have, and they've been struggling with it. So what happens is they have something from 1997. And, right. <laughs> uh, and this is like their second version, it may even be the third version, but it's just not working. They've got Clara, their office manager, who goes in and does some editing, and she's just frustrated all the time. Right. So they're like, all right, we need something new. So they go to, they, they hear about WordPress, and then they call us up. Boom. Like, we just got one last week, a sign company out in the Cape Cod area. Great. Completely new look. 100% new look. It works really well. Hmm. And it's all new. But we do updates. We can go in and just update a website. We have no problem with that. Right, right, right. Going in and just helping people out. We do find that a lot of people are confused. And they say, we don't want to do a new website. But you know, what do you charge to just do updates? And we just we charge very little. I mean, we People are really happy working with us because we don't charge a whole lot for updates because yeah. we feel like it's a family. We bring them in. Yeah. They like what we do. They might ask us to do something else. Right. You know, so. I, I remember chatting with you about websites and, and mm -hmm. kind of marrying it with the story brand concept of, of being clear in your message. Mm -hmm. And one of the best analogies I ever heard about a website is if your website isn't clear, when someone visits you, your website, it's like walking into a department store and heavy, having the manager of every department walk up to you at the same time mm. when you don't know where to go on a website. That's a, that's a good analogy. Right. And, and that visually, that analogy works when you land on a website and there's like color everywhere and there's buttons everywhere. Right. And right. there's a lot of navigation. Back in the day, people used to just throw the encyclopedia onto their website. Right. <laughs> they would put the about us, the testimonials. The mission statement, the, it would all be like, you'd see it along the top. Well, actually, right. in the day, it used to be on the left side. Remember that? Yeah, I remember. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now it's along the top. Oh, we're really hip now. Yeah. They're doing it horizontally. <laughs> but they still, they're not hip. 
because it's like 17 different things like click, 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 click. (laughs) And the goal is to make it as simple as possible, four or five pages tops. That might even be too much. And it is like walking into a department store and all the department heads show up. You just open the door and Hey, I'm with the toy department. I'm with lingerie. I'm with the. Uh, hey, let me show you. We got a sale here. We got to, like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no one is a host taking you through, saying, "What are you looking for?" And you're like, "I'm just looking for a yo-yo for my nephew. It's his birthday." How simple is that? So right. you know, <laughs> you really only need like really one page. Just go there. Yeah. We have this. What do you need? Click it on. I'm looking need? for a yo-yo. Boom. Then the whole yo-yo department. Yeah. So all this navigation is overbloated, but yeah, I, I like that analogy. It works for me. Yeah, and and you know the 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 other big mistake that I found people make with their websites and in their marketing is they want everything to be about themselves. And marketing is never yeah. about you; it's about the customer. Right. You you are the guide to help the customer, who's the hero, find the you know this. The, you, you need to solve that problem for the customer. Rather, yeah. you know, I said that. I said that to a client once that I knew it was a friend of mine that became a client. Uh-huh. And they said, well, I want to put my mission statement. I want to put a, I said, you sound like Beethoven. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, what do you mean? And I said, me, 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 yeah. <laughs> me, 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 right. everything. Yeah. It's, it, and we, we tell just about every client that everyone who visits a website is listening to WIFM radio. I don't know if you've heard that. Mm -hmm. It's what's in it for me. Yes. So when they go there, everything they read is like, oh, yeah, wow, they're speaking my language. Yeah. And there should be a lot of questions on the homepage. Are you frustrated with ba-ba-da-ba-da? Are you? 100%, yeah. Yeah, and it's because then the brain starts to work like a muscle. Yeah, I am frustrated with finding a used lawnmower. Wow. Okay. So this yep. is the sign I should be on. Yeah. And, and the other thing, one of the uh, best pieces of copywriting advice I ever read was when you write something, look how many times you write, you wrote I or me in the, in the copy and change that to you or your. Yes. And, and I always remember every time I'm writing something like, e- even when I'm updating my, my LinkedIn about section, Mm-hmm. I went through that. I'm like, oh, that says I, that says me. And I changed it to you and your. And it's it, just that word change is so dramatic in the, in, the, in the mind of the person reading it because you, now you're talking about them. Yeah. Isn't that the most powerful word? Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. you and your. I, I heard the sweetest sound in the English language to any customer is their own name. Is their own name. Yep. So when you meet someone and, and you're, you're a, golden god at this you know you meet a guy for the first time you you try to remember their name and i'm really bad at that i gotta admit but if their name is jeremy you're like you know jeremy let me take you over here and show you these you know this thing over here this is a better quality you know jeremy tell me about your you know your wife you told me about you know all of a sudden they're hearing that's that's the sweetest sound in the world is their own name right right and there's a way to do it And there's also a way to overdo it. Like I've seen salespeople overdo the names and then it sounds fake. You know, know. it's like, it's like they're doing it too much. They're trying too hard. So I hear you, Alan. No, Alan, I hear you, Alan. In fact, Alan, many times, Alan, I've, I've heard Alan, so many people, Alan. (laughs) Oh my God. It's kicking in. It's kicking in. my friend. Yeah. You're, you're, you're way ahead of me. It looks like so. Well, Um, this is pretty cool. So, um, you just, I had a question for you and I just lost it, but that's okay. So we don't have to end with this, but since we're talking about all this stuff, I want to get to the question of the week. And um, this is from Marshall and he is in Boston. So a local guy, both Dave and I are from Rhode Island, as most of people know. Hmm. And Marshall writes, and we may have even answered this, but maybe Dave, you can shed a little more light on it. Marshall writes, can you give me any advice in starting my own podcast? Now, Dave doesn't do a podcast. He does a, does a live show, and this is a podcast, so maybe both of us can answer in our own way. So what, what would you say to Marshall on that one, Dave? The question was the best way to start a podcast? or yeah, the he easiest? writes, can you give me any advice in starting my own podcast? So it's a very generic kind of question. It sounds like he has no idea what to do. So and he's using Okay, starting Google. a podcast. Any idea? Well, there's the technical side, and then there's the content side. So 
Right. Don't even deal with the technical side, in my opinion, right away. Find out if you have the content. Right. Like, do you have something that's unique? Do you have a, a new way of looking at whatever it is that you're going to have the podcast about? I mean, it'd be good to know, like, what Marshall was going to have a podcast on. Yeah, that's all he wrote. But, yeah. So if it's unique, if it's like, you know, I'm, I don't know, I sell whatever birdhouses and I, I, I make birdhouses and I want to have a podcast about that. Mm -hmm. That could go a long way. I mean, you could talk about different kinds of wood and different tools you use, and you could interview other people who, you know, have made birdhouses. But how long will that last? You know, right. does it have a lot of legs? So think about that. Think about how, how, how long, how many legs, how many episodes, quote unquote, would your show have? Could you do it all in 20 episodes and then you're kind of done? Right. right. So if you want to have a podcast, think about the life of it. How long could it go? That's a great Is point. Is it something that's always changing? That's what I would say first. Yeah, that's a great point because there is, there is a, you know, you're going to have a niche audience. If you have a niche talent like building birdhouses, mm -hmm. you, you would find an audience. You absolutely would find an audience, but you're right. How many shows can you have on, a bird, on birdhouses? So, so right, that's an right. excellent point. And we mentioned this as we were chatting before, the, before we re hit record. I think you can make a decision today on, on you have a podcast or you can have a live stream. Live yep. streams right now are so popular. When you see a live stream pop up on your phone, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, don't tell me it does. You don't pause for a second and you consider going on it because it's live. Right, right. There's something about that word live. So you do your live show. Yeah. And I've been on your live show and it's awesome. Again, anyone, you need to look it up. It's called Wine Thank with you. Dave. But I started doing a live stream on on LinkedIn. And I've it, it seems like there's a different little bit of a different audience watching that than people who are watching my podcast. So um, it's true. It's yeah. true. I mean, I started Wine with Dave on April 1st. So the pandemic was hitting. And I said, let me just shave my head because I'm not going to be seeing people. So let me, I always wanted to shave. So my daughter held my iPhone and we went live on Facebook and I shaved my head. No good cameras, nothing. Right. And I had like 30 people watching, 30. That was big. I was like, whoa. Right. <laughs> they were all like, Dave, shave the back. No, keep the top like a mohawk. And it was, it was laughter and we're drinking. And then at the end, they said something very specific. And I don't know who said this. I should look it up. But um, they said, are you going to do this tomorrow night? And oh, I'm like, wow. oh, I guess I could. Now, that was March 30th. Well, what was tomorrow night? April 1st. April, April 1st. Yeah. So no joke. I started Wine with Dave on April 1st. And I said, well, I got to have a name. Being a logo designer, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> give me a project. Give me a project. You know, right. <laughs> I'm like a squirrel. You know, squirrel, you know, give me a project. <laughs> I'll start anything in a, in a heartbeat. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to have wine because I'm going to be home. Can't go out to dinner. My name's Dave. So people are going to have wine with Dave. I yep. really, honestly, I thought three seconds on the name and that was it. Yeah. So I created wine with Dave, went live April 1st. I just hit my 80th episode last week with awesome. a woman from Russia, right from Moscow. Wow. Stratsfutsia Devachka. So <laughs> it was great. I speak a little Russian, but it was all in English. Yep. And she is an experimental folk, techno, hip hop, folky musician, beautiful, gorgeous blonde hair, The mu plays music. And it was great. I, I mean, I've interviewed people from England, Canada. Greece, a heavy metal band in Greece. Oh yeah, you're like you're like David Letterman right now of the Facebook. So it's like well, that's know. the cool thing with a live show. You can you can get anyone all over the world. Yeah, and it's entertaining. But the thing is, people look at you like really the red line that runs underneath it. There's a reason why I'm doing this. It's so people see that I'm really good at live video and I'm really good at that. Mm -hmm. So they go, "Oh, can you teach me how to do that?" Mm -hmm. So that's really the kind of the the MO. Uh, so have you all. been teaching people? Have, has that been part of your, your, I've been repertoire? getting, I've been getting a few people saying, can you show me how I just got a friend who was in Indiana who says, Dave, I I'm working with a yoga studio and they want to do live on their yoga studio. They're doing like Amrit breathing and, and breathing mm -hmm. techniques and, and all that. 
And I said, have them call me. So they're going to be calling me up. And, and so, yeah, I can be doing train. I can train people. I'm doing live. Live is, I think I am a huge podcast freak. I love podcasts, but it takes so long to develop all those followers. Yeah, it does. Apple doesn't show you how many people follow you or download you. No. Whereas on live streams, you know exactly who's coming. I yeah. mean, I've had, we did after George Floyd was murdered, I, um, I realized that live broadcasting is a real serious medium. And it's a responsibility to allow voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. Broadcasting is really powerful. I mean, it's live, but it's, you have a voice, a real voice that people do stop. I mean, they're not scrolling past the Statue of Liberty here, you know, yeah. the height of the Statue of Liberty. They stop, like you said, and they go, whoa, what is this? It's live. Yeah. And they listen. And so I had racism week, the week. I remember that. Two weeks after. Mm -hmm. I had over 7,000 views mm. that whole week, five days. Wow. So that was pretty powerful. That wasn't me. That was the subject matter. Yeah. But it is powerful so well sorry. you know what you th think about it now it's like mm. it's 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 basically a form of radio with with visuals at yeah. this point you know because you know radio used to be the only medium and and people would sit around in their living rooms staring at a radio um mm -hmm. you know back in the in the 30s and the 40s and then so now it's really when you can when you can catch it when you're behind your desk or you're not going to be doing it in your car but when you when you when you're static somewhere and you see a live show, you, you tend to watch it rather than keep scrolling. I think, right. I think it's a great idea. So Marshall, back to you, you know, if, right. if, if you want to do something live, I would recommend it. But from a podcasting standpoint, Dave's hundred percent correct. It does take it. Podcasting is a long play. You're not going to get a thousand downloads in your second episode, you know, unless you're Britney Spears or something like that, but you're going to, mm -hmm. you're going to need to just be consistent and be good. You can't, you know, take time being putting out quality. Like, you know, don't just wing it and hope people will listen. People will realize when they're listening to quality, when it's when it's well produced, when it's well recorded, when it's well edited, and mm -hmm. they'll tell people and, you know, my my listenership has gone up every single week. I check to the point where you can check it because again, Apple doesn't show you how many downloads you have. So, but Stitcher does and Spotify does, but you never know if it's a listen or if it's a download. So there's a lot of different, you know, convoluted stats, but mm -hmm. if you're going to do a podcast, you got to make a commitment and you got to have the content. You got to have something that's going to last, you know, you, you want to, you don't, you don't want to do a podcast for three months and then run out of stuff. So it's got to be a topic right. that, that you can have guests and, and, and I would recommend, here's my last piece of advice is I would recommend having guests. I know there's a lot of people that do podcasts on their own. Um, I find those much less entertaining than the than the ones that that have guests that's just me yeah because we like it's the whole like listening in like eavesdropping on people yeah we, we like we like hearing that and marshall keep in mind that most podcast shows only last i think it's three months yeah that's what i saw it's like 90 percent will drop off because they go eh, i'm kind of bored with it so yep. if you're really passionate about a subject then Definitely go forward and try it. But if yep. you're not that passionate, don't even bother because you'll only last three months. Right. And it's not you personally. It's just it's human nature. Yep. And and I read a stat that so many podcasts started since the pandemic because everybody was home. So like, oh, let me start a podcast. And they're dropping like flies. Like the people who stay through this, who actually get through the pandemic and have a consistent podcast are going to find themselves pretty successful at the end of it as opposed mm -hmm. to the people who tried it. And like you said, drop off in three months. Right. So there's right, an opportunity exactly. there. There is. And you know, it, and I, I'm sure you agree with that, Alan, is the whole niching down. Like if, you, if you're going to be an attorney, just talk about specific things with it. Maybe it's the attorney who has the podcast that helps other attorneys stop their own business. Yeah. And they don't yeah. talk about their own business. They talk about how to start an attorney business. Right. Right. You know, how to get clients, how to do ads, how to do social media, you know, that's a little more niche. I mean, that could fly. Well, so. here's a, another great example is so many people, they doubt themselves and they mm -hmm. say, well, I, why don't, I don't have anything to say. Like, why would I go on? I was speaking to someone. He was a real estate agent. This was about two weeks ago. He's like, why would I go on LinkedIn? 
I said, why wouldn't you go on LinkedIn? I said, I, I know your clients are on Facebook and Instagram. I said, but think about it. If you go on LinkedIn, there are not a lot of real estate agents on LinkedIn that I've ever seen. And you just get a following. Everyone on LinkedIn, their average income on LinkedIn is $75,000 a year. Chances right. are they own a house. Even though they work for you know, a manufacturer or a plumbing company or they're a marketing person, they own a house. And if mm -hmm. they need to buy that house or find a mortgage, they're going to remember the guy they saw on LinkedIn every single exactly. week. Exactly. And people don't realize that. They're like, oh, my audience is not there. I don't have anything to say. Therefore, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Social media is the great equalizer. You could never get that kind of an ad exposure on TV. Never. Mass media. I mean, it's like social media just slapped mass media in the head. Yeah, absolutely. Imagine that. I mean, you could just post something on LinkedIn for free. So what yeah. I used to say is there's half a billion people on LinkedIn. Well, now it's 700 million. So yeah. <clears throat> imagine 700,000 people in a room every single week in a networking group. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, it's like a stadium, 700,000 people and only 3 million people post regularly. Yep. So that's three people. Everyone has duct tape over their mouth. Yeah. <laughs> all 700 million people. I mean, that's the analogy I use, right? Yeah. So it's they all have duct tape and they're all waiting for someone to speak. And yep. the three people that walk into the stadium, they don't have duct tape over their mouth. And you could be one of them. And you walk up wow. to the podium every single week and you talk about your business. I'm an attorney and I do blah, 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 blah. And then you get down, you, you leave. And they're all listening. Yep. 700 million of them are listening. 700,000, sorry. 1%. No, 700, that's a, million. 700 million, but if 1% are listening, it's still 700,000. <laughs> yeah, even 1%, one, even 1%. half. Yeah, yeah. E even a, a half a percent. one yeah. <laughs> percent. Even getting 70 people listening. Yeah. yeah. You stood in front of LinkedIn audience once a week, you posted something, and at the very least, 70 people are all ears. Mm -hmm. And it's not 70, it's 700, it's, it's right. 7,000. Right. It's 7 million. It's unbelievable. And it's all, yeah, definitely go on LinkedIn. Yeah. And it's also the people that they know. You know, don't forget the people that they know. And they say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you know what? I saw this guy on LinkedIn the last couple of weeks. You need a mortgage. I would contact him. He can point you in the right direction. So it, it, it's it, the opportunities today for, for, especially for young businesses starting out, if, if, if you really are intentional and you give yourself a plan and you're consistent, You'll be, you're going to be successful. You really will. Mm -hmm. You know, you will Dave be, and I, yeah. Dave was drawing with pencils uh, 20 years ago and, and I was using a dot matrix printer. So, um, <laughs> dot matrix. Remember that? The, I, my first computer was the Commodore 64. I know you remember that one. The oh Apple my gosh. Commodore 64. <laughs> the Commodore 64. I never had one of those, although I did play Pong. So yes. I don't know what I had. Was that a Commodore? No, it wasn't a Commodore. No, Pong was Atari. Atari. I was an Atari kid. Yeah. Pong. It was had just like, it was like, yeah. doot, doot. <laughs> and I was drilled. We were gamers, right? <laughs> yeah, that was really a gamer. Yeah. Yeah. So my latest yeah. thing is getting on Twitch. So I set up my own account. So I'm new. I'm new what's, to that. What's Twitch? So Twitch is a lot, a lot of gamers. It started with gamers. It's live. It's a okay. live social media. Okay. Um, and you go on your, if, if you have an internet TV, just download the Twitch app. Okay. And it's, it's amazing. It it's a whole new world. Really? It's kind of like the, it's the Pinterest of live. Um, you oh, know, when you wow. go on Pinterest and you get lost. Yeah. People are oh, building yeah. decks, they're building fireplaces. And you're like, whoa, I'm, right. <laughs> now you want to make, you want to make homemade candles and everything now because you're on Pinterest. <laughs> well, you go to Twitch and there's all these people gaming. And I'm not a gamer, so I leave that category, but I go to illustration and design, and you can go to comedy, you can go to DJ, and then there's just people live doing DJ. They're just DJing all night long, just waka, waka, waka. Wow. And, uh, but I was watching this Russian woman draw this um, beautiful face of a girl with purple hair coming down, and it was so lifelike, and it was all digital. She had a little uh, bamboo pen, digital pencil. Yeah, she's yeah, drawing yeah. it, and she's in the corner, like right in the corner of, of the video, 
just talking and she's got her headphones on and she's like, oh, hi. Oh, hi, Julie. Thanks for coming on. And there's a <laughs> chat box on the right. You can text her. Oh, what are you using? Wow. Oh, I'm using a Wacom board with a, a 7.3 pencil and da, 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 da. And she's just got the music going. And I sat there for an hour and a half, like just completely watching. into her drawing. So Twitch is really cool if you're a oh, creator. I want to check that. I, I, literally, this is the first time I ever heard of it. So Twitch you taught me something else tonight, Dave. You always teach me something. So you Do know you Twitch. should bring that. Bring that. I know you're doing a tip of the week this week. So for, for the networking group, uh, you should mention that as well. Yeah, you know, I think I might do that. I'll yeah, talk about I, Twitch. I think that would be a good one. All right. Well, we, we are at the almost the 50 minute mark already. Time flies when you're having a good time. Wow. So yeah, crazy, right? I really appreciate you being on, Dave. This is awesome. Tell people how they can find Dave, Dave England and how they can find Wine with Dave before we, before we sign off. So Wine with Dave is just go to facebook.com forward slash Wine with Dave. Uh, just type it in. You'll see the logo, a white logo on a, on a blue inky background. And just go ahead and follow me. Just click follow and just leave the rest to me. I'll do it all. It's and, awesome, uh, by the way. I, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun to listen to. It's entertaining. Mm. Dave knows what he's doing. He, he does all kinds of does a joke of the week an app of the week or the, I, I i haven't watched in a, in a couple of a little bit but i know you have these things that you do every week that's that are very very entertaining and, and informative so highly it's recommend. fun yeah yeah and we go live every wednesday night nine o'clock nine okay. to ten it's great i've got a female bodybuilder coming up in a few weeks and then i've got santa claus coming up in december <laughs> so i'm gonna have a live q a with santa claus for the kids I might wow. not make it nine to ten. I'll make it eight to nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be cool, right? That'll and, be really uh, cool. And also, England Studio is my my. That's my bread and butter. So with Sal and I, you can go to Facebook and look us up. England E N G L U N D L U Studio, yep. England Studio, and you can find us there or go to englandstudio.com. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. David, this has been a blast. I love that you've been on my show and. Finally. Yes. <laughs> you made it. You can put it, you put it right next to your other awards, right? <laughs> oh, I can relax now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, this has been uh, Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. That's Dave England. I'm Al Langer. And uh, we will see you next time. And again, don't forget, it's marketingandsalespodcast.com. Send me a question. And if we read your quest, if we read your question, I, I am having a little bit too much to drink tonight. You will get a free signed book by me. Everyone, thanks for joining, and we'll see you again next time.